कथात तप्तजीवन कविरीडित कलमशापम श्रवणमंगल श्रीमदादत भुवि गृणंती ये भूरीदा जना श्री श्री रामकृष्ण कथामृत दि गास्पल ऑफ श्री रामकृष्ण रेकॉर्डेड बै एम महेन्द्रनाथ गुप्त एन अपोस्टल ऑफ दि मास्टर श्री रामकृष्ण भक्त संगे कमल कुटीरे श्री रामकृष्ण श्रीयुक्त केशव चंद्र सेन श्री रामकृष्ण एंड द कंपनी ऑफ डिवोटीज एंड कमल कुटीर वेद श्री केशव चंद्र सेन ब्राह्म समाज इत्यादि स्थान अनेक बार ठाकुर कथा छोले केशव चंद्र सेन के उपदेश दिया नाना पथ दिया नाना धर्म भीतर दिया ईश्वर लाभ होते पारे it is possible to realize god traversing along so many paths and the practice of so many varieties of religions majhe majhe nirjane sadan bhajan kore bhakti labh kore sanshare thaka jay it is possible to live in this world after performing साधना इन सॉलिट्यूड एंड अक्वायरिंग भक्ति जनकादि ब्रह्म ज्ञान लाभ कर संसारे छें व्याकुल डाकते हैं तब देखा दें पीपल लाइक जनक राजा लिवड इन दर्ल्ड आफ्टर अक्वायरिंग ब्रह्म ज्ञान इफ वन कॉल्स अप ऑन गॉड विद इंटेंस लॉन्गिंग देन ही शैल रिवील हिमसेल्फ टू यू एंड गिव हिज दर्शन तुम्हारा जा करो निराकार साधन ता खूब भलो इजिंग द ब्राह्मण डिवोटिस दे बिलीव इन निराकार गॉड विदाउट फार्म द खाइंड ऑफ साधना दैट यू डू निराकार साधना हो दैट इज एक्सलेंट डाक तो है तब देखा दें तुम्हारा जा करो निराकार साधन से खूब भलो so you should call upon him this is a very important statement which we find in the gospel of ramakrishna what is the sadhana in spiritual life so many varieties of practices are mentioned in hindu religion christian religion islam so many varieties of religions and in the hindu religion the shaktas the vaishnavas the nirakaravadis the brahmagyani so many people have given so many different varieties of sadhana to be able to realize god and know the infinite reality the simplest sadhana which sri ramakrishna has given us in this modern age where a person has very little time and energy to perform sadhana what is that dakar matan dakte hoy dako dako means call call upon god the idea being if we believe that there is one reality who listens to our prayers maybe he is with form maybe without form but there is some power somewhere which is running the affairs of this universe even science believes in their power i am very fond of quoting Albert Einstein one of the greatest scientists of all time in which he said my religion consists of a humble adoration of an illimitable intelligence which our dull faculties can comprehend in the most primitive form there's an illimitable huge infinite intelligence which is running the affairs of this universe which is controlling nature the sun and the moon and the stars and the nebulae their orbits and their movements in the macrocosmic external world and the atoms and the molecules and the subatomic particles in the micro world microcosmic world in the external nature and in the internal nature the mind the uh, uh, thoughts spirit and so on the entire thing is a continuum 
what we call the space-time-matter-consciousness continuum. Albert Einstein, the special theory of relativity in 1905, showed the continuum of space-time, is that space and time are not two different entities. <laughs> One cannot think of space without time and time without space. So he called it space-time continuum. And the general theory of relativity extended it by saying space, time, matter, continuum. What Vedanta has talked about millions of years ago is space, time, matter, consciousness continuum. What you call the physical world, the mental world, and the subtlest of the subtle, the spiritual world form one continuum. This is easily realized through the study of the Taitriya Upanishad, in which a human being is considered a five-layered personality. The physical layer called the Annamaya, the vital layer, the pranic layer called the Pranamaya, and the mental layer called the Manomaya, and deeper, deeper than that, the higher intuitive layer called the Vijnanamaya, and ultimately the Anandamaya, which is the spiritual, and beyond the Anandamaya is the Nirguna, Nirakara, Brahman. Interestingly, every one of them is called the Atma. Atma is the Self, which shows that each of these layers has an autonomous existence called the self of its own. The Annamaya Atma, Pranamaya Atma, Manomaya Atma, Vijnanamaya Atma, Anandamaya Atma. The physical self, the vital self, the mental self, the higher intuitive wisdom self, and ultimately the bliss self. What is called kosha, annamaya kosha, pranamaya kosha, manomaya kosha, vijnanamaya kosha and anandamaya kosha are not directly supported by the text of the Upanishad. Bhagavan Bhashyakara Shankara, he talked about these koshas for a particular purpose to suit his philosophy. But the original text in the Taittiriya talks about an autonomous self. Each self being autonomous, being governed by its own laws. Each of the selves has its own laws. And they form a continuum. How do you know? Look at the text. Anyontara atma manomaya tenaisha purnaha Sava Esha Purusha Vidhayeva Tena Esha Purnaha Tena Esha Purnaha The Annamaya Atma is filled by the Pranamaya Atma. The Pranamaya Atma in turn is, in turn is filled by the Manomaya Atma. The Manomaya Atma in turn is filled by the Vijnanamaya Atma. The Vijnanamaya Atma is filled by the Anandamaya Atma. Tena esha purnaha. Purna means it is filled, it is saturated, it is interpenetrated. Otaprota is a word which is very often used in the Upanishad. Otaprota, saturated, interpenetrated, filled. They form a continuum. The Annamaya, Pranamaya, Manomaya, Vijnanamaya, Anandamaya form one continuum, which means you can't have a demarcation between. Life and non-life, matter and life, and consciousness and life. Matter, life, consciousness, they form a continuum. Swami Vivekananda talks about super-consciousness in his Raja Yoga book. When he spoke about super-consciousness, there's a great revolution in psychology. Freud and others talked about the subconscious and the unconscious and conscious. 
Swami Vivekananda is a super conscious. What the Western psychologists call as the conscious, the Indian psychologists, the yogis call it the unconscious. The manas is an unconscious matter. Annamayam hi somya mana. Oh, good looking one, somya. The mind is matter. How do you know? An experiment is performed, Chandagya Upanishad. The disciple is called and said, recite the Vedas. He beautifully recites the Vedas. Then he says, fast for 10 days. You can take a little food once in a day and water and come back. After fasting, partially for 10 days he comes back and now and then he fumbles, he can't remember. Go back again, fast for some more time, some more days, living only on water. Comes back after a long time and says, he is unable to remember much. Later on he is sent again, he fasts completely, he says, I can't remember anything. Again they say, go, slowly start eating, then he gets everything back. This is a simple experiment which is performed to show that what you call the mind is actually manufactured from food. Annamayam hi somya manaha. So mind is only matter. We call life, mind as conscious according to the Western psychology. But the Indian, the Bharatiya Manovigyanam, it says the mind, the manas is actually jada. Beyond the mind is the buddhi, vijnanamaya. There, the spiritual awakening first takes place. The Vijnanamaya is the buddhi, which is a subtle intelligence. And this buddhi is not the ordinary buddhi intellect which remembers, which can repeat, which has sharp understanding of many things. No. It is the intuitive understanding of spiritual and higher truths, which we normally call as wisdom. Beyond knowledge which is there stored in the Manomaya, there is intuitive wisdom which is in the Vijnanamaya. And beyond that is the Anandamaya. So the five-layered personality which Taitri Upanishad speaks about clearly demonstrates that each of these Atma, Annamaya, Pranamaya, Manomaya, Vijnanamaya, Anandamaya is filled by the other. They form a simple continuum. The demarcation between matter and life, prana, life and consciousness, manomaya, vijnanamaya, just doesn't exist. One is filled by the other. So you dakar matan dako, that means you call on him, then the higher powers of the intuitive wisdom is opened up. It is possible for a human being to awaken the higher consciousness through intense prayer. Prayer is not petitioning to God, give him a list of what you want. Prayer is an expression of the deep longing of the soul. Suppose you have some terrible want and in that want you feel so terribly restless and from within there's a cry which goes up. There's no going up or coming down but the language which you use which says, Oh God, I can't live without this. Sri Ramakrishna gives a very simple example of the intense pull, he used the word tan, means pull, 
which a mother feels towards a child, which a chaste wife feels for the husband, which a miser, a person is deeply attached to wealth, feels towards his possessions and wealth. Mayer Shantaner Pratitan Shotir Patir Pratitan Vishayir Vishayir Pratitan A teen tan ak hole Ishwar kek in the power jai. Why does he give this example? Because we can actually feel it in our daily life. How deeply, suppose you love somebody deeply. It could be your ch children, it could be your mother or parents, it could be your wife or, or children, it could be your possessions. If you very deeply are drawn to something, then there's pull that you feel that itself draws you. Your whole life is concentrated upon that. You don't want anything else except that one thing which you deeply love. This is an interesting phenomenon in life. So Sri Ramakrishna uses this imagery to show that if you call upon the supreme reality with tremendous longing, yearning for God, then you shall be blessed with this realization. Call upon him with a real call. What is the real call? Dakar Moton Daktepe. What is the real call? Not imagined, not fake, not feigned, but you feel a deep void within. You feel uneasy, you feel restless. Swami Ramakrishna Ananda has a small talk, paths to realization. There he says, if you take a fish out of water and put it in a throne, give all the honor of a king or the emperor, you feed it, you honor it, and you praise it, will the fish be happy? No. The fish will cry, please put me back in water. I do not want any of these. I want to be back in my own abode. This is the kind of longing. What does it mean? It means our real abode is something else. We have strayed from there. This is not a real abode. Unfortunately, we have fallen from that abode. All the religions talk about this. When the Adam's fall is depicted in Christianity through original sin, it really means, according to Vedanta, original ignorance or avidya, mula avidya, <coughs> anadi avidya maya, because of which the infinite self, nitya shuddha mukta swarupa, sachidananda, akhandaike ekarasa, the homogeneous infinite self, is covered by ignorance and imagines that it is small, pity, it is full of pain. It is identifying with the body, with the senses, with the mind, with the intellect. That is the fall. And the longing to go back to your real abode is where religion begins. <coughs> Swami Vivekananda defines religion as follows. Religion begins with the intensest dissatisfaction with your present state of affairs. Your present state is actually a degenerate state. This state is not a real state of your existence. To be able to assert the real state, you have to go higher. Just like the fish which has been taken and put in the throne, given all the honor, we get all the honor in the world. We may be awarded with the highest prize in this world. You may be praised by everybody. You may become the king of kings. But still there is a deep uneasiness within you, restlessness within you. You feel unhappy. Every person in this world, man or woman or child, rich or poor, 
king or bigger a great scholar an illiterate person all of them are deeply in sorrow there is restlessness this was a great discovery of buddha buddha discovered that there is a dukkha everywhere dukkham dukkham sarvam dukkham what does it mean the deep existential sorrow this sorrow is not because of something it is not caused by something it is just existence itself gives you this sorrow if we had been good enough for that infinite we would not have been born at all because we have been born on account of some desire the fulfillment that the desire takes away all our time just like the fish in the story the fish is restless to go back to water swami ramakrishna ananda therefore beautifully describes the situation by saying when somebody is restless somebody is unhappy don't criticize him as saying he is so restless all the restlessness that a person feels is because he wants to somehow go back to his real nature where all restlessness will stop yasmin sthito na dukhe na guruna api vichalyate established in which he will not be agitated even by the greatest of sorrow what is that state you go back to your real own real abode the beautiful song which narendra nath future vivekananda sang to sri ramakrishna during the earliest occasions the first occasion he met him second occasion he met him the songs which he sang are so beautiful the brahmo songs manu chalo nija niketane jabe ki ha ki he din amar मन चलो निज निकेतने संसार विदेश विदेशीर वेश भ्रम कैन कारण मन चलो निज निकेतने ओ माइंड गो बैक टू योर ओन अबोर्ड nijani ketane your own abode why are you roaming about in this foreign land to which you don't belong and wearing this foreign dress this is not yours this abode is not yours there's another song composed by premik maharaj nandul he was a very great composer and sadhaka siddha illumined the soul he was a close friend of swami brahmanand ji there's a very fine song the kalikirtan party the andol when they used to come to belur mat to sing the last song which they sing is this they sing and dance swami brahmanand also it seems in the mat courtyard used to join them and dance and go into samadhi ar ke no mone sanshare oh mind why are you in the samsara any more go back to the debord pakha bhede khoy uday nai ko chander shei pure nai khuda trishna bhog bipasha purnanand viraje ar keno mone sanshare जाय चलो से नगरे जेथा दीवानी पूर्ण शशी आनंद विराज करे जेथा दीवानी पूर्ण शशी आनंद विराज करे और कैन मने संसारे जाय चलो से नगरे Oh my god why are you moving about this world in this samsara which doesn't belong to you come come go back to that abode where always there is bright sunshine and moonshine 
where sun never sets, the moon sun never sets, light of consciousness is shining everywhere. <clears throat> Go back to that abode. This ananda, ananda, ananda keval, waves of bliss come and envelop you. There is no sorrow, there is no hunger, there is no thirst. Khoda Trishna Bhog Pipasa Purnananda Virahe Viraje. There is no Kshuda, there is no Trishna, there is no hunger, there is no thirst. Always great joy is there. Ravindranath composed a simple four line song of which Swami Vivekananda Narendranath was very fond. Bohe Anantara, Bohe Nirantara, Ananta Anandadhara. Ananta Anandadhara, Nirantara Bohe. Non stop, uninterruptedly, continuously, infinite stream of bliss is flowing. <coughs> These are the great realizations which the rishis and the modern saints have realized. <coughs> so you call up this Atman within through longing and prayer. We are feeling restless, we are feeling unhappy, we are passing through terrible times. So much of depression, unhappiness everywhere and people quarreling, fighting with trivial small issues <coughs> then what do you do call 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 upon your own self if you are advaitically inclined as Swami Vivekananda said we answer our own prayers when you pray to God who is identical with your own self you are invoking the powers of your own inner self. Bring them up, bring them up. Why do you weep, my child? Call up your power within. Your infinite, divine, conscious nature alone will conquer and not the dull, dead matter. Amantrayasya Bhagavan Bhagadam Swaroopam Trailakya Medadakhilam Tava Padamule Atmai Vahiprabhavate Najadakkadachit Swami Vivekananda's poem. In the midst of a letter to Swami Ramakrishnanda, he simply writes this, this small poem. He is a okay, oh my friend, why are you weeping, my friend? In you is all power. Amantra Yasa, call up this power within. Wake up, call up this power. Call, call, repeatedly call. Your Swarupa, your real nature is infinite. It is the Atman, Nitya Shuddha Buddha Mukta, eternally pure, ever free, ever illumined, ever awakened. That's what you are in reality. Call up that power within. So the idea of Dhaka, Dakar Matun Dako, how many times Sri Ramakrishna has mentioned this? Vyakul Hoye Taki Dakte Hoy, Tobetini Dakadan. Vyakul Hoye Dhaka. Vyakul means with the intense longing, you are restless, you are unable to bear this dual world anymore, Dvaita Prapancha, eating and sleeping and sense gratification and and social society and nonsense is not worth wasting a life upon, Swami Vivekananda says. Everybody wants to socialize, the social media, then contacting everybody, internet friends and so on. Why don't you contact your own higher self? Unfortunately, the Lord himself is responsible, the Upanishad says, for making all the senses outgoing. The person who has created the senses, Swayam Bhu, he has made all the senses outgoing and therefore they go out, they are extrovert. And 
it requires enormous Herculean power to be able to turn all the senses inward. How? Desiring immortality, intensest longing to become immortal. How many times we have been born and then we have died again, we are coming again and again. Are we not tired? We are not. Again and again it blows. Baramvara paisho aghat kano koro vrithai uddham. Swamiji says in the poem, Sakharu Prati to your friend. Again and again you get blows after blows in this world. Why are you again running behind this samsara? Ar kano mone shongshare jai cholo shei nagare. Why are you valling in the samsara anymore, my mind? Let's go back to that grey region of illumination, the brightest of the bright, where the sun and the moon never set, the infinite light of consciousness constantly shines forth. What a joy! Dakaramadun dakte hai, vyakul hoye dakte hai. Vyakulata can't be induced any more than hunger can be induced. <laughs> it happens. You feel hungry. Not that you induce hunger. These are certain things which happen. See, Ramakrishna gives a beautiful example. The child will go to sleep, told the mother, Mother, when I feel the call of nature, please wake me up. Then the mother said, my child, that in that feeling itself will wake you up. <laughs> when you feel intense longing, you will not feel like eating anything. When you are upset with tremendous sorrow, the deepest sorrow, will you feel like eating? Will you feel like sleeping? Or when you have an exam tomorrow and then you are terribly afraid of facing the exam, then you will not like to eat, you will not like to sleep. Because the fear instinct overpowers. Or the sorrow instinct overpowers. Now, rather than any instinct overpowering, can your viveka, the discernment between the real and the unreal, an understanding of the real nature of the Dvaita Prapancha, the world in which we live, can awaken you. Now the coronavirus, this time the COVID-19 pandemic, has given up a waking wake-up call. Oh man, wake up, wake up. Why do you waste your time in quarreling? Immediately after the pandemic, pandemic is still perhaps not over, we do not know, a terrible war is brewing. Man is trying to kill man. Why? Because the great restlessness within. So unless the mind is cleansed, of ragadvesha, like and dislike, hatred and enmity, human civilization will never be peaceful and happy. The UNESCO preamble said, since war begins in the minds of men, it is in the minds of men that the defenses of peace should be built up. It is the mind which is important. This is where the bhakti, Vedanta, religion, all of them come in. The true religion is not ritualistic. It is not going to the temples and mosques and churches. It is not wearing this, not, not wearing that. It is not eating or fasting. These are all incidentals of religion. As Dr. Sarvapalli Radhakrishna once defined religion, a religion is not doctrinal conformity nor ceremonial piety. It is participation in the wisdom of being. It is insight into reality. Again, another place he said, a religion is self-discovery or a rather a recovery. It is a soul's dialogue with itself. <laughs> you want to transcend yourself. You want to enter into the universe because that's your real nature. Why does the fish want to rush to water? The real abode of the fish is water. A real abode is that infinite. We want to go back to the lap of that infinite. Why? There alone you'll find lasting happiness. 
लास्टिंग ब्लिस एंड लास्टिंग पीस यद भूमा वै तत्सुखम न अल्पे सुखम अस्ती इन द इन्फिनिट अलोन इज जॉय एंड ब्लिस इन स्मॉल फाइनाइट थिंग देयर इज नो जॉय देयर इज नो ब्लिस कठोपनिषद इट सेस तमात्मस्थम ये अनुपश्यन्ति धीरा तेषां सुखम शाश्वतम नेतरेषां only a person who has realized his innermost self the atman as the infinite self he alone gets infinite bliss na itaresham nobody else tamatmastham ye nupashyanti dhiraha tesham shanti shashvati netaresham only a person who has realized his inner self is infinite and pure nitya shuddha buddha mukta swarupa ever free ever awakened ever illumined ever pure only he or she only that person can have a lasting peace and none else and none else this is the eternal message of india now being spoken through the voice of sri ramakrishna in this gospel <coughs> this is the underpinning of the entire religious and the spiritual fabric of india the spiritual legacy the cultural and the spiritual heritage of india entire thing rests on one sentence tarati shokam atmavit chanda gopanishad narada goes to sanat kumara narada being a great scholar of the vedas and the vedanta and so many vidyas he says i am deeply sorrowful goes to sanat kumara the great sage and says shochami i am deeply sorrowful please teach me Sanat Kumar smiles and sir please tell me what you know already what you have learned already and I will teach you further gives you a huge list rigveda yajurveda samaveda atharvaveda the four vedas have mastered shiksha kalpa vyakaranam niruktam chando jyotishi all the six vedangas have mastered sarpa vidya nakshatra vidya rashi vidya dhan vidya so many kinds of vidyas i have mastered at the end of it i am so full of misery shochami i am miserable i am so sorrowful shokasya param tarayutu is crying to sanat kumara the rishi please take me across beyond this terrible ocean of sorrow then sanat kumara teaches him the brahma vidya the atma vidya brahmatmaikya vidya the identity of the individual self as supreme self tarati shokam atma vid that is the upanishadic statement atma vid a person who realizes self he crosses over sorrow and he alone can cross over sorrow तमेव विदि अति मृत्युमेति नान्य पंथा विद्यते अयनाय नान्य पंथा विद्यते अयनाय शुण्वंत विश्व अमृत से पुत्रा ई चिल्ड्रन of immortal bliss listen listen to the declaration which i am making only by realizing tameva viditva amrutatvameti can you attain immortality there is no other way to attain immortality except realizing yourself as the immortal self wake up wake up Swami Vivekananda writes in a letter, "I preach nothing else but wake up, 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 wake up,
wake up, awake, 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 awake. The famous mantra in the Kathopanishad, of which Swami Vivekananda is particularly and especially fond, Uttishthata Jagrata Prapyavaran Nibodhata Arise, awake. And having approached the illumined people, learn from them. Arise and awake. Don't be sleeping. Anadi avidya maya. Bhashyagara Shankara says, You have been sleeping in anadi avidya maya, in that beginningless ignorance. You are now sleeping, you are awake. So, Sri Ramakrishna uses a different terminology. Vyakul hoye take dakte hai. Just like the fish, he's crying and calling, please put me back in water. Not because the fish is thinking, imagining and calling. It's the, the compulsion of the system. It can't live without water. A time comes when you blow after blows you get in life. Then he says, oh God, I don't want any more. This called enough is enough. Shankaracharya calls this in Sanskrit, Alam Pratyayavan. Who is a person who is a spiritual aspirant? A person who longs for God? A person who seeks liberation, supreme liberation? He is Alam Pratyayavan, a person who is possessed of, endowed with the conviction of Alam. Alam means enough. Sufficient. No more. In Bengali, we'll say Arna. Arna, Arna, Arna. Enough is enough. No more. I have come again and again and again. How many more births and deaths will I pass through? Punarapi Jananam, Punarapi Maranam. Punarapi janani jathare shayanam Yaha samsare khaludustare Kripaya pare pahi murare Bhajagovindam, Bhajagovindam Govindam bhajamudhamate Samprapte sannihite kale Nahi nahi rakshati dukrin karane. Being born and then dying again, coming to the mother's womb, round of births and death again and again and again. I am tired of this. No more. Alam pratyayavan. Vyakul hoye dakte hai. Tumraj chakaro nirakar shadanta khub bhalo. Brahma Jnan Hole Thik Bodh Kurbe Ishwar Shatto Arshab Anitya Brahma Shatto Jagan Mithya He says, see, no word of criticism or condemnation of any religion or any thought, a religious thought. The Brahma Samaj people did not believe in God with the farm. They are devoted to the farmless aspect of God. Sri Ramakrishna encouraged them. Oh, you are doing sadhana of the formulas aspect of God. Oh, that is excellent. That is very good. And he says, when you realize this aspect of God which you are worshipping, then you will realize that God alone is truth. Everything else is impermanent, non-eternal. Brahma Satya Jaganamitya. Brahman alone is truth, and this world is virtual. Mithya is not unreal, as it is wrongly sometimes translated. Now we know the virtual reality. <laughs> I am doing this class, and you all of you are listening from wherever you are. Is this a real class? Not exactly. It is unreal. No, it is not unreal. We are listening, we are participating, we are able to appreciate. 
you are able to see me on the screen able to hear me so it is a real but not apparently fully real but not unreal either so this kind of quasi reality is called a virtual reality called mithya mithya is a very misleading word in vedanta very often people think it is unreal jagana mithya does not mean the jagat doesn't exist creation was never there of course it is there we see we experience nahi drishte anupavannam nama shankara always says that which is seen pratyaksha and realized that cannot be wished away is it absolutely real no because it is changing anything which is changing cannot be absolutely real the only absolute reality is the changeless infinite nitya shuddha mukta satchidananda swarupa which is brahman realizable as the atman that is the only absolute sat is there any absolute asat yes simple conceptions or notions like the horn of a hare hare does not have a horn or pandya putra the son of a barren woman barren woman does not and cannot beget children there are only simple words without meaning words or phrases which have no corresponding reality they are absolute asat the world is neither absolute sat nor is it absolute asat so this category of existence which is neither absolute sat nor absolute asat is given technically called mithya it's a technical word it is nothing to do with unreality we should constantly remember this vedanta is misconceived misunderstood by many people saying the vedanta says the world is unreal the world is not unreal it is real but not in the sense that you think the unchanging reality of brahman is it is virtually real <laughs> we can understand virtual reality during this pandemic much more everywhere the virtual meetings taking place online meetings taking place <laughs> now is a hybrid mode partially physical offline and partially online is called hybrid mode blended mode and a new word has been coined how the language also changes new words are being discovered and thrown up digital mode a combination of physical and digital digital mode <laughs> very interesting the way the language develops so the world is digital in a sense it is virtual but in a sense it appears to be real so when you actually intuit brahman realize brahman in the core of your being is your own self or the atman you will realize that brahman alone is real truth the ultimate reality and the jagat is virtual it cannot be called to be ultimately real jagat mithya sanatan hindu dharme sakar nirakar dui mane in the sanatan hindu dharma the hinduism eternal religion of the hindus we accept both nirakara and sakara both the reality are god with form and god without form नाना भावे ईश्वर पूजा करे शांत दास्य सख्य वात्सल्य मधुर ईश्वर इज रिलेटेड टू यू इन सो मेनी वेज यू रिलेट टू हिम कॉल पंच भाव इन द हिंदू रिलीजन यू थिंक ऑफ योर सेल्फ एज मदर एंड थिंक ऑफ गॉड एज अ चाइल्ड वात्सल्य भाव लाइक यशोदा टू कृष्ण and kaushalya to ramachandra you have a maternal love for god as god as balagopala god as a child rama or dasya bhava like hanuman mahavir 
you are the eternal servant of the Lord, Nitya Kinkaro Bhavani. As Ramanujya would say, you are the eternal servant of the Lord. Or Sakya Bhava like Arjuna is the Sakha, the friend of the Lord. And, and Madhura Bhava, like the Gopikas, think of Lord as a husband. Without a, even a touch of carnal love. There is no body, there is no fleshly love there. Not even mental, it is pure, unselfish, spiritual love. In which you feel your beloved is your very own. There is no possession. Swami Vivekananda talks about the triangle of love. Three triangles of love. The first angle of this triangle of love, love knows no fear. The moment you have fear, there cannot be love. And love is no bargaining, is no expectation. I give so much of love and I expect in return so much. There is no expectation in love. I just give love and that's it. This is the second and and you feel that love is union. You want to unite with the beloved. Your separate existence you do not want. The moment you have expectation, fear, separation, then you don't love. The highest form of love, love is a very, very misused word in the modern days. Usually it is carnal, dealing with the flesh and the mind perhaps. But the divine love, prema bhakti, the word prema is a very highly and misunderstood, misused word. Often, even the great spiritual masters have used worldly allegory, worldly example to describe this divine love, so that we can understand. And shanta bhava, like the rishis, shanta upasita, Upashanto Yamatma Brahman Shanta Shantam Shivam Madvaitam Chaturtham Manyantesa Atma Savigya Yaha Mandakopanishad Brahman is Shanta Brahman is peaceful. So your whole mind and heart and the body and the senses are covered with filled with extraordinary peace and you worship the infinite as a peaceful, shanta upasita. Our relationship with the infinite, with the, with the Lord, with the Ishwara, is a true peace. Not the ordinary kind of peace where restlessness comes to an end. As Jesus the Christ has said, the peace that passeth understanding. Atyantam sukhamashnute Atyanta Shanti, Atyanta Ki Shanti, the Supreme Peace. A Rofan Chauki Valara Ajjan Shudhu Bodhure Bajai, Atacho Tahar Bashir Shad Pokarache. Kindu Arajjan, Aro Shad Pokarache, She Nana Rag Ragini Bajai. <laughs> He is telling them indirectly, you only harp upon God without form, nirakara. It is just like a person playing the uh, flute, Nadaswaram, they used to call in the South India, and one person always the is just to keep the uh, swara proper. But you have so many holes. So you play with this. You play with so many holes and so many different varieties of ragas and tunes come up. Raga ragani bajai. So enjoy God in innumerable forms. As Narakara and Sakara, 
ಇಂದು ಸಾಖ್ಯ ಭಾವ ಇಂದು ವಾತ್ಸಲ್ಯ ಭಾವ ಮಧುರ ಭಾವ ದಾಸ್ಯ ಭಾವ ಶಾಂತ ಭಾವ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೌ ಮೆನಿ ವೆರೈಟೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಯು ಎಂಜಾಯ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಸೇ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಎ ಗ್ಲಾಟನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ಎ ಗ್ಲಾಟನ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಹೂ ವಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ಟು ಈಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಈಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಈಟ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಈ ಇಸ್ ಹಂಗ್ರಿ ಬಟ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಹಿ ವಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ಎ ಟೇಸ್ಟ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಫುಡ್ he is never satiated with the food which he tastes insatiation constantly goes on tasting sometimes sweet sometimes bitter sometimes hot sometimes sweet constantly he wants to taste chinese food hungarian food american food brazilian food indian food punjabi food chinese food punjabi food and madrasi food south indian food north indian food so many varieties of food he wants to taste because his is the palate is so vibrant and strong he gives a simple example worldly example to make us understand how when you long for god vyakul hoye take daka with tremendous longing you call on him you can you will be never be satiated now you call on god as nirakara tota puri the advaita guru of sri ramakrishna taught him several kinds of meditation of the nirakara sadhana he said imagine yourself as a fish swimming blissfully and happily in a huge water reservoir then you think of yourself as a bird flying in the vast infinite sky happily so enjoy god as farmless then enjoy god with the farm as your beloved madhura bhava as your sakha sakya bhava as your master dasya bhava and shanta bhava as your child vatsalya bhava in innumerable ways you enjoy him he enjoy him as as khali as durga as the female goddess devi or krishna or rama or the avatar purusha or ganesha or kartikeya or shiva vishnu in innumerable ways we enjoy him they are all one ekam sad vipra bahudha vadanti so you just call it in through various names as one infinite principle just like one doesn't want to eat the same kind of food every day you feel stale you feel bored you feel uneasy oh why do you cook the same kind of food every day i want to eat something new fresh the same thing is cooked in different ways it is the same ingredient so let us now enjoy god in innumerable ways and the aim and end of human life is to intuit god as the infinite and the absolute and rejoice through the divine love of god sing and dance and rejoice rejoice and be exceeding glad as christ said in the bible live a godly god intoxicated divine life of wisdom of purity of infinite divine love this is the message for which longing earnestness is most vital vyakulata ಓಂ ನಿರಂಜನ ನಿತ್ಯಮನಂತರೂಪಂ ಭಕ್ತಾನುಕಂಪಾಧೃತ ವಿಗ್ರಹಂ ವೈ ಈಶಾವತಾರಂ ಪರಮೇಶಮೀಡ್ಯಂ ತಂ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಶಿರಸ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓಂ ತತ್ಸತ್ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ